Oh my gosh. I know, right? <laughs> Are they making you nauseous? This is oh really bizarre. <laughs> Holy Toledo. <laughs> You were first the child star of Blossom, then you took time off to get your PhD in neuroscience. Mm -hmm. Now you are the star of one of the hottest comedies on TV, plus you're a writer with your third book just coming out. Wow, were you always such an overachiever? Yes. <laughs> um, my mother has a very kind of go-getter personality. Um, we are list makers and we are very efficient multitaskers, as, yes. as women often tend absolutely, to be. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and I'm a second generation American, so I come from a very strong work ethic. And um, yeah. I think when you grow up in a family of immigrants, like yeah. with, with that being the story that is told so recently in your family history, mm -hmm. there's definitely a notion um, you know, of needing to be persistent and take the opportunities that are available. Do you think actually being a neuroscientist helps your inform your role at all? I think I have the easiest job in that, you know, I get to memorize words that I actually know sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, you know, for me it adds a nice personal flavor because when I do things outside of the acting world, like advocate for STEM education or write books like for yes. girls in science, yeah. like I think it, it's nice, it's a nice kind of tie-in. I like that it's a show about a group of people who are very unusual, um, who definitely would um, merit diagnoses in a you know in a psychological or psychiatric environment but we don't talk about diagnoses we don't talk about medication and much as people have issues with other people's quirks yeah um, we don't talk about wanting people to change or be really different from who they are we right. really are adjusting to people exactly the way they are and I think that's really sweet it is sweet and it's also in some ways something that you write about right. in your latest book girling up right Tell us why you wanted to write this book. <laughs> I knew that I had been approached to kind of put my face on a lot of different science books for girls and it didn't feel right um, for kind of who I authentically like to be as a scientist and a public person. And I actually wrote an article for my website, which is called Grok Nation. Um, I wrote an article about what it was like to do the episode where Amy and Sheldon have coitus for the first time. And for this article that I wrote, I, I wrote about what it was like to be a late bloomer and play one on television. And I was approached by Jill Santapolo at Penguin and she said, I love that you talked about modesty and boundaries without coming from a religious or political perspective. It's just kind of like who you are as a late bloomer. And she said, would you be interested in writing a whole book about it? And I said, well, actually, um, I would like to incorporate that into a larger book about the entire female experience from a scientific perspective as a female who was an unusual girl and is an unusual adult as so well. So that was the hook. So and since you're a scientist yes. and you like to view things, will you try on one of our oh VR? Oh my gosh, sure. Try on one of our, t these sometimes make me think. nauseous. I'm just going to say it. My publicist VR is like, but her hair is so pretty. <laughs> I think they're pretty cool. Do I just take one of them? What do you own? think? Yeah, they work. Oh they work. It might make me nauseous. Well, Mayim, thank you so much for coming and having fun with us. <laughs> oh my God. We appreciate it. Thanks. <laughs> oh.